Okay, today we're going to be talking about the minimum radius. Now, if you take a look, I have a faint line drawn in pencil right here. It's very hard to see. It's very light. All right, so that represents a roadway that was presently planned. However, there's an issue. There is something, an object, a historical site, there's something that can't be removed from that planned roadway. And so therefore we have to design a road to go around that issue. And so the vehicle will no longer travel on this road that was planned. This is the new road that was planned in which the vehicle will travel around. Now, every single road that has a horizontal curve will also have an associated radius. So this horizontal curve now, that is the new planned route, is going to have a radius associated with it. And I'm drawing it right now. That is a radius. And the radius is drawn to the center line of the road. So this is the center of the roadway there. Always drawn to the center line of the road. Sometimes you'll see the center line marked like this. So today we'll talk about how to calculate for the radius or to be more specific, what is the minimum amount of radius required to satisfy a speed on the proposed road. Take this road for example. Here is a road that has been planned uh, to be rerouted um, or if not rerouted, I guess a, a different way is to, is to be reconstructed. And so on this sheet, you can see that the radius has already been calculated. So you have a radius already been calculated. The length of the roadway has been calculated as well. On this sheet, you also see the very beginning of the old road, PC, and the very end of the old road, PT. And so that dotted line that you see here, that is the existing road and there has been a new proposed route which is shown to beginning at PC over here solid line and end at PT over here notice the difference between the length of the curve and its associated radius, I will probably bet you, uh, it is a lot longer than the original radius for that original curve marked in red. Let me show you how. Let's say I have a point where the radius is going to intersect about right here. And the original radius was set to be about this distance and the other radius or the new proposed radius was set to be about this distance Right, kind of drew that off a little bit, but you can see that the distance between here and here is different than the difference between here and here. Now, if I were setting the red line to be my original radius, and I had a roadway represented by this rubber band, and I used the ends of the rubber band to meet where the original radius is, look at the drastic curve that you see there. However, if I were to extend it to a larger radius, that curve is a little less pronounced. And if I had an even longer radius, I don't know, say about something that distance maybe, you can see that 
the curve is even less pronounced. So it's easier to travel on the curve with a large radius. The shorter the radius, the sharper the curve. Now we know that we do not desire to have a really, really sharp curve because vehicles wouldn't be able to travel on the road, especially at high speeds. So we want to make sure that our curves are, are designed properly enough so that vehicles will be able to safely travel on that road at the design speed. So that means that there should be a, an associated minimum radius such that the curve that is drawn from that radius is suitable for design speed. And so that minimum radius uh, requires a large enough right-of-way, uh, known radius or speed, uh, friction coefficient, and super elevation requirements. So let's just talk about the super elevation really quick. That is that E. It's a small little E. Uh, and notice that you may not be able to see it, but it's E divided by 100. All that means is that the percent that is given to you should be used as a decimal percentage later on. Now this may not mean much to you, but let me show you what uh, some requirements are for, say, um, a freeway. So there are different levels of freeway, and this is just some design standards that were taken from um, a, a Department of Transportation. Uh, one of the states in the United States and so what happens is they have some set guidelines so if you're using uh, a freeway a F1 uh, the design speed should be about 50 miles per hour and the number of lanes should be about four lanes but if you look a little bit further down you'll start to see some of the things that we're talking about such as the uh, maximum super elevation so the maximum super elevation for F1 is 0.1 or 10% super elevation. Remember, I said it should be a decimal. And there are also some other maximums as well the maximum grade, 4%, and so on and so forth. So sometimes these standards are already set for you, and if you have them set, then you can continue on because you have a known super elevation requirement. Now the friction coefficient really depends on the roadway and also the speed that one is traveling. So if you notice, taking it from this perspective of a vehicle traveling into the screen here, if it's curving on the roadway, it has a tendency to move that way as it's curving on the road. And so there's going to be some friction created between the tires and the roadway as the vehicle is curving. All right, that's to keep the vehicle on the road. And that's what happens with the super elevation. It embanks the road so that there is enough friction to keep the vehicle from sliding off. All right, but we need to know what that friction coefficient is. And again, that information can be shared with you through the tables. Um, so here are some tables that I received from your textbook. Um, that show what the friction coefficient is for a certain design speed. And then right next to it is the R min or minimum radius equation, where this is your speed, this is a uh, constant, this is your side friction coefficient for a given design speed, and of course your super elevation. So all that needs to happen is uh, you plug in those numbers, you figure out what your minimum radius should be. Now before continuing on to uh, an example, I wanted to make sure this is understood. You have your radius here for the original planned roadway. You remember this roadway is being shifted a little bit, therefore it changes the new roadway. The beginning of the curve starts here, the end of the curve starts here. Now this old this this new radius here uh, said seven or the old one is seven one three point nine nine, and I want you to know that seven one three point nine nine feet is in reference to the center line of the road. All right, that's very important. It's the center line of the road. So if it was a two lane road, it'll be in reference to the middle of the two lane road. If it was a four lane road, it would be in reference to the middle of the four lane road. 
It's also important to note that that radius is not the minimum. That is the design calculated radius for this roadway. The minimum radius that I showed you in the previous page and slide, this equation, is the lowest radius for a, a given speed, the lowest allowed radius for a given speed. So that means this radius here is either at the lowest or above the lowest required for the design speed of this roadway. Now to share some really quick examples, uh, this first one here, uh, straightforward roadway being designed for a speed of 70 miles per hour. At one horizontal curve, it is known that the super elevation is 8%, and the coefficient of side friction is 0.1. Determine the minimum radius of the curve that will provide for safe vehicle operation. So we just need to, need to plug in the original formula. Got your 70 here. Don't forget to square it. This is your constant. Here is your side friction. You can get this from the tables. All right, that's from the tables, and this right here is your super elevation notice that it is in decimal form and so the minimum the minimal amount of uh, radius allowed for this roadway is 1814 or 15 feet anything lower than that would not provide a safe roadway at 70 miles per hour you can go higher than that and it'll still be okay so here's another example. There's an existing curve which has a radius of 250 feet. So here's that curve going to the middle of the roadway there and it's 250 feet from where they meet to the center of the road. Super elevation is 8% side friction 0.16 the speed on the curved section is 70 percent of the design speed on the straight section and the question is asking to find the design speed on the straight roadway segment so what should this design speed be if this is only 70 percent of what that is and I think that makes sense because sometimes when you are traveling onto a roadway and you and you're approaching a curve uh, every once in a while they decrease the speed limit uh, just for at least that roadway section especially if it's a, a tight curve so that's the question let's approach the answer and so just for reference I went ahead and put the our main equation right here and I also put all the numbers that were given to us uh, within the minimum radius equation and looks like we have everything but the speed and so solving for speed I ended up, ended up getting 30 miles per hour and that 30 miles per hour is in reference to this part of the curve here however that doesn't answer the question because we wanted to know what should the speed limit be right here so since it was 70 percent of that speed I'll just take 30 divided by 0 0.7 and I end up with an answer close to 42.9 miles per hour. That is what the speed should be on that segment. Okay, I think that should about that should about um, complete all of the information that is required for you to know how to handle the rate, uh, minimum radius equation, but. I did want to drive one more time this point across to you. Let's say I wanted to add another lane, another lane on this side of the roadway. Uh, there's only one lane there. Let's say I want to add another lane here. Okay. What would that do to the radius? Well, I told you that the radius is always from the point where they intersect to the middle of the roadway. So since this was one lane, one, one lane road before, the middle of the roadway was here. But now what we have done is we added, extended the roadway. And so now your radius is going to extend another six feet, especially if we're assuming that this is 12 feet from edge of the road to the other edge of the road. So what does that do? That changes your 
radius to 256 feet right so just remember keep in mind that the radius that is calculated here using this R min is always in reference to the center line of the roadway and you have to identify that and sometimes you may need to subtract accordingly all right I think that should about cover it all but here's just one last thing to think about since we understand that the speed is connected to the minimum radius and the minimum radius in reference to the center of the roadway and I, I know that um, I just drew another lane there do you think that the speed on this side of the road can be traveled uh, can someone travel at a higher speed on this side of the road than on the closer to the edge of the roadway closer to the inside edge of the roadway what do you think do you think that the speed on the outside lane of the road can be faster theoretically speaking than the speed on the inside lane of the roadway if you answer yes then you are correct because remember the radius is associated to the speed and this radius is always in reference to the middle of the roadway so at a further distance away you would increase your arm in and therefore decrease the design speed 